Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. Um, I've had this Lyman uh, Turbo 1200 tumbler for probably over 10 years now. I normally use it to re uh, to clean up and reload rifle brass, as you can see in this bin here. But now that I have got it here in my machine shop, I'm going to take a look at how it cleans up uh, in this case, aluminum. Uh, I know of other people who have used these to great success with various types of media inside the tumbler. Or excuse me, it's not really a tumbler, it's a vibratory um, thing. I don't know what you call it. Anyways, what I really want to see is a part like this, which as you can see has distinctive toolpath marks, which in this one you can feel. I guess the mill probably wasn't trimmed perfectly or I was taking too heavy a cut. Um, so, so those are a little bit deeper than average, but also you can see on the edge there, there's some, uh, there's a little bit of a burr, and uh, I just want to see, you know, what it does aesthetically to the part. Does it round corners? Does it make them look shiny? Um, you can see on the back side of this part here, I've got um, sort of the raw uh, mill spec finish, and I've got a. Uh, crosshair there with the center punch similar thing um, this is a part I actually made to change my watch battery but uh, this has got a tool path exposed some threads the stock uh, mill finish on the back there this part is the one that I've uh, always had around as a scrap piece uh, I actually polished part of this one on another method so just kind of curious to see um, it's actually good that I'm videotaping this not only for um, YouTube and the blog but to give a comparison here's the side that I had previously polished you can see if I dust that off it's pretty scratched up now but you can see that that uh, has quite a well, decent mirror finish actually you can see the camera there and then lastly I just took a piece of looks like this is 3 8 inch aluminum which I had turned on the lathe as a looks like a scrap thread single point thread mistake and I'm curious to see what it does to a piece of round stock so I'm going to put these in the tumbler let them run um, overnight about eight hours which is not uncommon to do with rifle brass um, and come back in the morning and see how they look a quick um, update is that I don't I know there was some original media that either came with the tumbler or I just had from so long ago I've I purchased some of this which I thought it said what it was here we go yeah it's called corn cob green um, but that's I mixed that in with this so if you can see there's some lighter specks in here which um, I think a lot of them have probably dirtied or you can actually see some more of the lighter spec stuff in in the bin here that's a mixture of something old that I don't remember along with this green corn cob. So uh, I'll be back in the morning and let's see how, how it looks. Alright, it's morning now, about eight hours, nine hours later, and the um, parts do not look good. It doesn't look like the uh, vibra vibratory tumbler did much. Um, I want to take a quick shot here, and then um, what I'll do is just go rinse them off under the small chance that that improve some of the surface finish but you know didn't deburr this part at least much tool paths are definitely still there so let me go rinse these off real quick okay rinse them off um, at first I didn't think there was really any change at all and I had written off for the time being the usefulness of the, at least with the um, this tumbler or at least with this type of corn cob material however I did notice, if you look at the inside bevel of the uh, threaded hole there, um, that some of the um, areas of the aluminum which were previously sort of cleaned up and polished now have quite a nice, here's another example of the um, bevel on the uh, edge of that piece of round stock do have a nice sheen, which kind of makes sense because the way this material works uh, when cleaning up rifle cartridges, which are brass, is uh, it is able to shine or polish an existing 
uh, piece of brass which is sort of already clean. In other words, this is more of a light polish than say uh, an abrasive some uh, grit, if you will. So let me do some research. Let me see. Maybe uh, you know I've already I already own the tumbler, which is um, I think it was a couple hundred bucks or maybe a hundred bucks. So maybe you know a ten dollar bag of new media will get some better results. I'll be back. The first type of tumbler media I am going to try are green uh, pyramid rust cutting uh, material from Eastwood. Um, I read about these um, and I, I was ordering from Eastwood for some other things which is why I bought them here. Um, but basically I've heard a lot of sort of good things about the uh, green pyramid style uh, media so I thought I'd give them a shot. Unfortunately, I actually forgot to take a picture of it before I used it. They all used to be a brighter green when they uh, be before I ran them, so they kind of look like this one, if you will. But um, now that I've run them, they're a little dirty. Uh, that's okay. Apparently, you can use these all the way until they disintegrate and disappear. Um, my only complaint was these were a little bit expensive. It was two and a half pounds of uh, media for 22 bucks, and that was not quite enough to... Um, for really for my tumbler, I probably should have had uh, at least another two and a half pounds. So I ran the parts in the green pyramid media for about three hours, and let's uh, let's take a look at how the parts turned out. Okay, here's how the parts look after the green triangles. They definitely have a nice matte sort of speckled finish to them, but um, because I don't have the most rigid of a, a CNC mill, the tool path marks that it leaves are a little bit rougher due to a low rigidity and so they're a bit rough, the tool marks themselves are deeper and so they aren't completely gone on this part. Um, this part looks pretty nice, nice speckled finish if you will, a yeah, matte finish and this one same thing, you know good finish but you can still see some tool path marks so um, that was once again with the previously bright green, now they're sort of a dusty green uh, triangles that I bought from Eastwood. Next we're going to try some coarse cut half inch um, ceramic media that I bought from McMaster and, and it is much much more coarse. You can just feel this feels like an emery file um, and they're bigger too so um, quite a few differences. The geometry, the coarseness, um, and uh, the size and such. So um, I am going to try these on these parts and uh, see how they turn out. All right, that box, which was 10 pounds of media, was just enough to fill up my tumbler. I'll obviously put the lid on, but just real quick, I'll turn it on. So uh, I'll report back shortly. Okay, I let these parts run in the vibratory tumbler for about an hour and a half with the coarsest, grittiest stuff. I just dumped them out. I need to go wash them off, but I just want to show you, I'm kind of surprised at how, uh, how dusty they are. Um, and as you can see, this is the problem with using a larger media, is I got uh, one or two pieces stuck in that hole, which, um, you know, it'll come out, but obviously that means the area right around here wasn't getting the same uh, treatment. So let me go rinse these off and see how they look. Very interesting results. They, um, the parts, kind of have become darkened by that, um, by this material, uh, and I kind of like it. It's kind of a nice matte, non-speckled finish. Um, it's. I was worried that these might really knock off my corners, and they rounded them off a little, um, but not bad. And the tool marks are definitely much less. The parts are smoother. Um, this one in particular, I kind of like the look of it. I, I um, wiped this one over a scotch Brite pad ever so quickly, which is why there's some scratch marks on it now from the scotch Brite pad, but it had a nice finish. Um, this piece, what I did was I scrubbed the tip here with a scotch Brite pad for just a minute. And you can see that makes a huge difference, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, same thing I did on this side. I um, didn't do anything over here, but I, I touched that up with a scotch Brite pad. Um, and this part as well, but I, I, I'm kind of intrigued. I like this finish. Um, the obvious, 
you know, bit with the scotch Bright pad tells you that, you know, what you, I'm doing this sort of backwards, you should probably start with a coarse material like this, and then polish up with a finer material, maybe go to the triangles, um, and then finish up with a rouge or um, corn, cob, corn cob or walnut media. Um, I, but I've got a lot of learning to do here. My thought too is that um, I'm tumbling everything dry, and I think what you want to do is have some sort of a liquid or a comp polishing compound to help um, carry away some of the debris. Um, and I also can't get these uh, out of there right now, so I'll worry about that later. So, um, you know, I don't really have any takeaways just yet, um, other than uh, I've got some learning to do. That's all, folks. Thanks.